Welcome to the podcast with Kylie Nichols. I made the unlikely transition from stay-at-home mom to CEO of Nickel and Suede, a leading multi-million dollar fashion company. At Nickel and Suede, we empower the everyday woman to step into her story more boldly, one life-changing accessory at a time. The goal of this podcast is to inspire you through my story and the stories of other powerhouse women to live the best version of your life. So grab a notebook, grab a pen, and get ready to get started with Kylie Nichols. Hey guys, happy Friday. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, it's a good day. It's a fun day. We are launching new products at Nicole and Suede today. It's Friday. It's summertime. Soren's on the podcast today. And it's also Nicole and Suede's sixth birthday. So welcome, Soren. Welcome and happy birthday. Yeah, I guess it feels like one of our kids' birthdays today because Nicole and Suede, we had like, like, Knox, we had Easton Kessler Knox, and then Nicole and Suede was born, originated June 19th, 2014. And it's been six years. So, thought today would be a fun day to have you on the podcast and just talk about that, reminisce a little bit about how long and yet how short six years can go by. So, yeah. um, Yeah, it's uh, Nicole and Suede sixth birthday and last week we were in dallas opening our dallas location uh we had a retail store open in the west village which was really exciting and felt like it took about a year to from you know idea to making it happen it's our second location technically third but really second retail location uh, we've got our online business been working on wholesale a little bit so that's kind of like a little snapshot of where we are right now. We're working on our third retail store that's kind of heavily involved where you're at right now on the plaza in Kansas City. So the people listening can't see you nodding. <laughs> so I should add something. Okay, so we were in Dallas and I was driving home. You flew into Dallas and then flew home. I drove because I had a bunch of stuff to bring and bring home. And while I was driving home, I like to flip through my phone and listen to music. So I find clusters of music that I haven't listened to for a while. Okay. And there was a cluster of music that I was listening to that said, oh, hey, I haven't heard this in a while. Yeah. In fact, I haven't listened to this album since I was in my garage trying to find room for more leather Hmm. back in the days when we still kept all of our leather in the garage on one piece of plywood. I had two sawhorses that I made out of two by fours and uh, galvanized brackets. And then I had one piece of plywood where I laid out the veg tan leather that we used to use for our belts in the garage. And I remember rearranging those while wearing my headphones. And so listening to that music brought that back. And it seemed like, wow, was it that long ago? Yeah. That I've not listened to this album because it seems like a lifetime ago that we were in that position. Which, do you remember the songs at all? Probably I'm not, not going to admit. <laughs> <laughs> fine, fine, fine. We had just gone to a uh, um, Taylor Swift concert, <laughs> so I'm sure it was some of so that in there. oldies but goodies. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, but fun that you're able to find that. And we've been looking back through pictures and stuff and remembering like um, when we first got our first like piece of heavy equipment and you, Kessler... He's almost 10, but he was probably three, and you gave him a little sledgehammer to try to, to break open the, there was crate. Um, a crate around it, because it arrived in a crate on this huge stick coming off semi-truck, because it was so mm-hmm. heavy, and so you letting Kessler take a little, little sledgehammer to it to try to break open the crate, and that feels like so long ago looking at the pictures, but it really wasn't very many years ago that it was mm-hmm. in our little garage, so. Yeah, and then we look at Knox now, and I think of Knox. Uh, wearing his little belt in the front yard as our model and um, look at him now and holy smokes he's enormous he just turned seven right so for those who haven't maybe listened to the podcast for very long or haven't been with nickel and suede for very long we do have an episode um, early on in the podcast where we kind of talk about the start of nickel and suede but nickel and suede started um kind of out of our first Etsy shop, which was called One Little Belt, and we did make these tiny little belts for our little boys, and we only had, you know, two, three little boys back when Nickel and Suede started, and then we stopped making belts because the earrings really took the place of that, and we turned it into a business. Um, 
And so I think what I was thinking about today was like the question I get most often, even when I was down in Dallas, I kept getting the question from in our new store associates or whoever. It's just like, did you ever think that it was going to be like this? Or do you ever think that it was going to be this big or you'd have a store in Dallas? And so um, it's kind of a hard question to answer. Um, I wanted to see what your take was on it. And I thought maybe it'd be good to think reminisce maybe on what we did think at the beginning like what we thought it was going to be and then maybe now what we think it can be so that's my brief outline for the podcast for yeah. you yeah so what did you think when we started what did you think nickel and suede is going to be well my first thought was that we're going to get all professional football teams and dance teams to wear our earrings that's what you thought and back that then. the next season of uh miss america would be wearing our earrings and that somehow we just needed to get Taylor Swift's number and get her to wear our earrings and we'd be done. <laughs> and it would be amazing. I remember thinking... So easy. Like that would be, could just be the marketing Oh, this would be so easy, for... right. Because um, it was such a good idea and we just need to roll it out, right? That's all we have to do. All these people are going to... Nurses everywhere. Uh, I was thinking of people who are kind of forced to wear a specific uniform that may not be the focal point of in, you know, like a nurse in their scrubs, they want something else to accessorize with. And so I was thinking of those groups that would find ultra utility out of uh, the ability to accessorize with uh, leather earrings being lightweight and comfortable. And um, I just I just thought it would explode and, but had no idea the work that goes into, you know, placing them in all those ways. Yeah, I remember you trying to get me to talk to the chiefs and that oh the dance teams need to all wear these and the, but there's like there are lots of obstacles that go into okay dancers wearing earrings not wearing earrings and then there were times when we had great success with placing earrings on celebrities and then finding out oh it doesn't actually do that much if your name's not plastered on the screen with them so like right. i remember um who was it that Miranda Lambert. Miranda Lambert wearing our signature silver cutouts on the big screens at all of her concerts and seeing pictures of it getting those texted to me and being like, those are my earrings. They've got to be the most comfortable earrings she's ever worn on stage. But she's certainly not going to stop her concert and be like, by the way, you guys, these are the most comfortable <laughs> earrings I've ever worn and you should go buy them. Right. And because she didn't, nobody knew they were ours. They thought right. they were metal and it was just like blip on the screen. We paid for that placement. It was exciting for us and then there's so much more work that goes into like okay well i guess that wasn't the right the thing who knows what will be the thing um but yeah i remember that being a, a learning point yeah so it was totally naive totally dreamer oh my goodness this could do so well while at the same time not having a clue <laughs> actually what it would take yeah but then you also thought we could stay in our basement forever totally. so we had a little split level I mean, it's good size, three bedroom split level that we started our business out of in our unfinished basement. And I don't know how many times you rearrange that basement to make more space out of 300 square feet and a garage. Like every three months. But um, totally thought, I don't know, it took a long time to convince you we needed to leave the basement. We could stay there forever. Totally. I was ready to, oh, this is the perfect product. We can make it in our basement forever. We can, you know, uh, make and ship so much product with so little space required. That yeah. was one of the genius of uh, points of the idea, I thought, is, oh, my goodness, look how little shelf space this takes up. Yeah. And look how much we can produce in such a small space. Yeah. And, yeah, just totally thinking really small and then really naively big at the same time. So just kind of clueless, really, overall. Yeah. Yeah, I. so what I remember thinking... I don't have as good a memory as you do, honestly. Just remember thinking like, what is Nickel and Suede going to be? What's it going to mean? And I, until you quit your job, which he, he did quit his job the day that we launched our website and the day that we really launched Nickel and Suede. But it took, you know, six months of however much building up the brand and fig taking product photos, figuring out, I thought it was going to be like my side gig. Like, I'm going to keep blogging as a mom and then sell these cute earrings on the side. These are gonna be fun. I'm gonna go do these little vendor pop-up booths. I'd been doing those at the local fairs. I'll keep doing those. And these are much more fun to sell. They're my style. This is exciting for me. I love being able to pick out the colors and it was much more feminine than the belts. And just like, this is a women's product. I'm really excited to be able to sell that. 
So that was as far as I remember thinking at the beginning. And then we got going a little bit farther. And it was really exciting to see how many women were just like taking off with it and getting so excited. And it was spreading like wildfire, I guess. But um, I'd say it took a couple of years for me to start really dreaming bigger with it. It felt like it was getting bigger faster than I was dreaming big, maybe. So Mm -hmm. that's how I remember at the beginning. Yeah, that's fair. So when did you, when did it shift for you to like, okay, we want to do something bigger with this? I know you quit your job because you're like, I've, this has got real potential. Um, I think it shifted. There was a shift that happened when we moved out of the basement yeah. and I realized that, oh, uh, we can't just have uh, everything here close by. We have now something to manage. Uh, remotely. There's a store that's open all the time now. There's a workplace that we have to go to where people need it cleaned. (laughs) They need it uh, to be stocked with toilet paper. Who's going to do that? They need air conditioner. We have offices now. All of those things that that came with that. That was a shift. Uh, Another shift was when we decided that we needed to hire employees and have help uh, and the kinds of employees that we needed and the levels. And so f- in the early eight, early steps, we were feeling like nobody needs a job description or a position title. Nobody needs a mission statement or a goal statement or yeah. any of those things because we're just coming here and doing work. We're just making earrings. There's more earrings that are on order than right. we've got made. So, so just, just focus on that and let's earrings. just ship the orders, ship yeah. the orders. And yeah. then systems started to evolve to make us more efficient and focused on our tasks uh, specialization started to occur, but it was all still, oh, we're way too small of a company for that. Yeah. When, you know, they approached us for, you know, people wanted to invest in the business or people wanted to, you know, set us up with a 401k plan or uh, a, um, a, uh, a trust for the value of the business that would be then belong to our family so that we could pass that on to our kids. I'm, no, no, no. We're, you know, we're too early for all these, yeah. these sorts of things. Um, And then we recently just hired our first C-level executive. We've got a COO now, uh, whereas not too long ago, I felt like we're way too small for that. We're way too small for hiring someone that feels that they have that level of responsibility over our business. Um, And so I would say that, you know, the curve uh, has, you know, kind of steepened um, recently as we've kind of grown into levels. Another time we uh i felt a shift was when we went to the ink conference uh having placed very high on the ink 500 list of fastest growing companies and found that oh we're a nobody <laughs> like yeah we grew really fast yeah. but you know when they said that most businesses who have made it through these first five years you know they said 50 percent of you who, who are in the room will be out of business in the next year mm. meaning that <laughs> you guys made it here because it's at the end of your cycle good run and the few businesses actually make it past that. So now it's been two years past that for us. Um, But when we realized that um, the hard work has only just started. That was definitely a moment for me. I remember going to that conference and being like, yay, look at us. We have done so much good hard work. And then being like, oh, this is the beginning of the climb. The beginning. Yeah. And I I definitely feel like we've, felt that over the last year and a half it was like okay this is not easy this does take perseverance this it's not for the faint of heart and like if things are hard that means you're probably doing it right and that it just takes it's the not giving up it's the getting up every day and doing it again and being willing to just admit you don't know things that you know everything all the things I talk about on the podcast like actually putting those to work and actually believing in them um has really been, I think, the hard work of keeping our, a business going. Yeah. I don't want to downplay what we've done because all the consultants that we've talked to are always very um, um, congratulatory on, you know, where we are now is everyone's dream to be where we are now. Yeah. Um, so don't downplay that, but I'm about to downplay it. And <laughs> you it, always downplay everything. It's, That's it's just your realist like, card. I think of like the movie Little Rascals where they make these go-karts and they race them down the street. Are they called box cars? Yeah, um, they're like those go-karts. So the little go, so they're I feel b- like we won, we won the race <laughs> in go-karts and that, because we're kids, we feel like that's the pinnacle of, yeah. you know, 
achievement and that we find out that oh to have a factory where you make real cars on an assembly line with happy employees and systems that have been optimized um, and vendor relationships that are um, kind of you know vendors previously would look at us like you sell what you sell how many and they didn't really take us seriously we had to talk them into it and so um, to see that building that next level is uh, way bigger scope than yeah. the boxcar days. Um, I feel like we're into the beginning of that level. Yeah, I can see why. You That's think what that. six years looks like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think when it people ask me that question, so you know, did you did you ever think it could be like this? And so, you know that did you ever think you guys would be opening a store in Dallas? Did you ever think you'd have you know headquarters and things? And to me. Um, like I said, it's a big question. And so it's like, yes and no. Right. Like at the beginning, I didn't think that we would be doing this. But then as women caught on to the product, as they loved it, as the brand grew and kind of had it created its own identity. And that was something we were really intentional at the beginning was we want the brand to have its own identity. And how do we do that? And what does that mean? And that's even something we're still trying to really put on paper and formulate like what are what do we really stand for what are our real values but like as that has kind of become obvious to me or like the potential has become obvious the potential has kind of become more and more obvious the more that we've like stepped forward through this like process of okay we're going to figure it out we're going to figure out how to make a product that nobody else has ever made in mass before we're going to figure out how to make it here in the states and make it ourselves instead of going to a factory and have someone else make it like we're going to just we're going to figure all these things out as we've done that i've seen wow the potential i think here is just huge and so sometimes i'm like yeah of course i thought we could get this far because there's so much further we can go so of course but then in other ways it's like no because this is like amazing can you believe based on the basement days and based on you know if you talk to my relatives who haven't seen me in 10 years they'd be like Kylie did what like she barely talked to anybody ever in high school and now she greets people who come to store openings like we've changed a lot we've grown a lot through the process I think and so it's like a yes and no I totally see the potential being so much bigger than even I'm capable on delivering right now which is why we're trying to find and hire um, you know hire help and figure that out like how do we build that factory of you know car manufacturing right. dreams that we would want to be able to give to Nick on Suede. so um so yeah it's been a it's an interesting time to reflect at six years because it's like wow we've come so far and I feel like I was saying to Derek earlier I'm like I think just for more like the naivety is like rubbing off like, or like wearing off a little bit like wow I'm seeing a lot more of what I don't know and that's a good thing because that means you can go ask for questions go ask help and say like, okay, this is, now we can set our sights on more goals. But it's also like, don't look down, Kylie. Don't look down. Like, just keep going. All right, ready for climbing analogy? So, oh gosh, another one. <laughs> okay, so when you're mountain climbing, you start in the middle of the night. You start at midnight. Yeah. So that the ice you is... You can't see anything. So you don't know so how much danger you're anything. in. So you can't see anything. So 100%, 100% <laughs> this is so funny, 100% you have no idea how much danger you're in. So that's the phase we've been in. Yeah. And then you get to this middle layer where the sun starts to come up and you can see some clouds. The clouds are around you. So you still can't see the danger, but you can see a little bit more. You get above the clouds. You still can't see what was below you, but you can see your target ahead of you. So now you can see where you're going because you've gotten past the clouds. The crazy part is when... (laughs) Now the business analogy is past. Okay, don't go for it. When you climb down the mountain in the daytime and you see what you climbed past that you didn't even know was there, it's amazing. You're like, oh my goodness, I cannot believe we walked right here. This is the craziest way we picked to go. Why would we go this way? Oh no, I think that's... But you didn't see it in the nighttime. I think that's still relevant. And I think that probably as we, you know, work with our business consultant, he's sometimes in that position of looking at it like, you got here how? Like (laughs) what? (laughs) You did what? You got to this level how? Like, okay, let's... (laughs) <laughs> Let's get you guys roped up. Like, okay. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you got here on your shoestring and, you know, and you're like a lot of hopes and dreams and like yep. that's going to run out real quick if we want to make this a real thing. Yes, so, that's exactly what it feels like. 
But I don't know. I think it's been an interesting time right now. Um, and hopefully just listening to us kind of share our story. I feel like that's where the hopefully the value is for people. They just hear, you know, I think hearing other people's stories can be so helpful um, to maybe apply to your journey. Um, but that like we've been in this transition of trying to like we've done it all. Like we've been the ones doing it all to, Hey, I want to give this brand or give this like our child a nickel and spade. Like we want to give it like more, we want to have like more potential. And so turn, that's why we've chosen to like turn it into an organization or we've chosen to like go bigger, like go big or go home. Um, but like that has been a question we've had to play around with and talk about is like, okay, how big do we want to make this? How, what kind of life do we want to have? What kind of work life balance do we want to have? And I think other business owners kind of have to, I don't know, face the same question. Like there's, there's been a lot of brands we admire where it's like, wow, that's so cool to see a husband and wife start something and have it grow into something so much bigger. And that gives us motivation to be like, okay, we can do that too. Um, and so that's what kind of gives us motivation to keep going because we've seen other people do it too. But we know there's a lot of hard work that goes from it just being the two of us to changing into, yeah. okay, we have a whole team and there's like a lot more to it now. Um, and so, you know, but there's just, there's lots of ways I think people could choose to run their business and choose to, to do their business even you know business together but I think that's where we've seen like Nicole and Zade make such an impact on so many of women like our customers the impact that it makes I'm like I can't not want to make that impact on so many more women like I can't not give it that full potential and that full ability to like change lives encourage women to be brave empower them encourage that optimism like be a light be like shining be hopeful, be a positive brand. And like, I think there will, there's a space for that in the bigger marketplace. And so do I know how to get there? Do, am I fully qualified to step up and say, Hey, I'm across from the Apple store and I'm next to Sephora. And I'm like, I'm one of you guys. I wasn't sure that that was what we were going to do, but feels like that's where we're headed. That's what we're going to try to do. We're like saddling up for that because we literally have a store across from the Apple store and across from J crew and all and the people who drove in from out of state or from S South Texas or whatever to come see you. Yeah. They would all agree. Yeah. And I think that that's the thing is I think you just decide who you're going to be and then you go after it and you say, we'll figure it out on our way. Um, and that's, you know, you don't always know who you are or what you're going to be at the beginning, but then you get there um, through just continuing to step forward. So I feel like that's what we've done as a brand and together and with our team. And um, I, that's where I see the future of where we're going. Um, does it seem easy? Does it seem like doable tomorrow? Does it seem like we know exactly how to get there? No to, no to all of those. But it does seem like that's where we ought to be. And it does seem like that's the place where we can make a big difference. So that's where we should go so so yeah that's where i see the future of like where i see the brand going and where we're trying to take it so so what's the birthday theme the birthday theme yeah do we have the theme six years we're getting pizza tomorrow birthday cake <laughs> um, ping pong six years today is we all wore denim on denim um i think i don't i don't it's kind of a theme of we still have a lot of work to do this weekend guys so we're going to squeeze in a celebration yeah i think it's celebrate the small wins yeah. i think six means celebrate the small wins and it also kind of sucks <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's still kind of hard zone yeah it's not like three or four like three is so was so exciting five is like woohoo five six we is like to five all right keep going and we're really proud of it so so it's like wednesday thursday anyway. friday is celebrate we made it to friday oh my goodness quit it with the <laughs> analogies that, that one doesn't even land okay. <sighs> any other color you want to add to early nickel and suede days versus now mm. 
Do you feel like things have turned out how you thought they would? Uh, yeah. What? Um, <laughs> things are so not how I thought they would be in so many ways. I guess that goes against what I just said, but in like our life, ba- like work-life balance and like how hard I thought things would be, I don't know. I guess it could be this. They so I, are so what I thought and they aren't. So I look at it kind of like the music that I started off with at the beginning. Sure. You know, I'm scrolling through my music. The artists show up in alphabetical order and I was in the um, T's on my way home from Dallas and the last time I did that, I was in like the O's or something. And so it seems like I haven't had a chance since starting the business to even listen to music is what it feels like. <laughs> feels like, oh yeah, these are the albums I just bought last week. This is my new music folder right here. You do do that. And it's six years old. So your new music is six years old because right. you've been so busy running the business. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably Hey, true. I like this. This is my new favorite song from mm-hmm. it was six years ago. Yeah. So. So no, I didn't see that coming. I didn't see that so many things would get put on pause for endless continuous work. Yeah. uh, That's just gone and gone and gone. And, um, you know, I try to think when was it we took the boys camping or when was the last time we went to see your family? Uh, It's hard to make time for those things because so much is going on uh, at the business. So, um, to see that six years has transpired is really kind of amazing. Yeah. I think there's lots of good lessons that we've learned. Like the, like you said, intent, intentional, you have to be intentional about a lot of those things. And it's been so easy to be like, Oh, just for now, we're not going to worry about that. Just for now, we're not going to do that. And we're going to just slack on this or slack on that because like the business needs it because this needs that. And so, now seeing like, okay, six years has gone by. Things haven't let up. It's actually harder now. Yeah. I think it's like a really good lesson to point out. Like if you want to listen to music, you're going to actually have to just listen to it because it's not going to let up. Same with camping. We have to plan that in. And so, yeah, I think it will just continue to grow and take over. And yeah, it's, it's, become, it's become our lives, whether we like it or whether that's good or not. So I think that's a good point. But when are we going back to uh, Palm Springs? For for a photo shoot or yeah. for fun? <laughs> that was how long ago was that? Four years ago? <laughs> two years ago? Two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah, but I do think that is the something that we wanna would would recommend and would suggest for people who you know if you're starting something or if you're really you are really busy with work or those kind of things is to be intentional and so like our Hawaii trip got postponed this year because of COVID and it's like okay no we have to reschedule that because otherwise there's no markers like you look back at six years and it's yes. just a blur of no yeah. like no points of reference yeah and so I have these points of reference over the years and it seems like we don't have enough of them yeah in yeah. the last year, what you know? What's our big point of reference? Yeah, we want those for us and for our family and for our memories too. So, as awesome as it is to, you know, have nickel and suede and to have, you know, things go well or grow or things like that, it's like you that balance. Like all the cliches are true; they're true for a reason. So we're all we're kind of we need we need to pull back on some of those and say okay. How can we, how can we refocus so that we're happy? We're filling our cup. The business is getting what it needs. Our family's getting what it needs, and it's actually a huge blessing that we're at this point. Like we're six years in, and we're having to refocus so that we can have some balance. Right. It's Instead awesome. of being done, yeah, like so a awesome. Lot of businesses, so. yeah, it's especially huge. considering the COVID and everything that's happened yeah. to a lot of businesses. Yeah, so I'm really proud of us. I feel like we've done really well. I'm really proud of how strong we've been and how tough we've just worked through so many different scenarios. And I feel like that's one of our biggest strengths is like we figure it out, we get it done. Eventually we're optimistic. (laughs) Oh, I try to be optimistic all the time. Um, And we are just really believing what we're doing. And so it's good to do it together. So yeah, so happy six years and to six, 16, 18, 26, 36 more. I don't know how many more, but Mm. I do think, um, 
got a lot to be proud of for six years and then it's awesome to I think feel like every day there's still work to get up and do and that that is something that we can really be grateful for so so you know how you talk about um nickel and suede being like a person like here's her person here's her self here's her you know her own self what would we give her for her birthday pair of earrings of course (laughs) (laughs) so you know what came to my mind what was braces (laughs) what we're giving her braces because we're like putting the structure in place that's like uh, getting her, you know, what she wants and needs to be beautiful and grown up. And she's at like the braces age. We're giving her braces. Gotcha. We're working on all those things that um, are awkward at the time. Uh, it's hard work at the time, but totally worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I've described Nicole and Suede. Nikki, I guess is her name. I don't know. Yeah. So as like a, a her own person who kind of has her own like seat at the table that we're trying to just raise up to her full potential. And so um, she's just constantly in this awkward growth phase of like <laughs> long legs or like big nose or like gangly arms, like whatever, because the business is always just it's, it's maturing. maturing. It's like out of balance, like marketing's doing great, but we're behind on shipping orders or you know productions rocking and rolling but then you know something you know this department really needs to work on this and so we're just always like feeling out of balance and out of whack so that maturing teenager phase so that's where the braces comment comes in but i think she would rather have earrings so i'm just gonna leave it there (laughs) (laughs) okay all right well i hope that was kind of just helpful and kind of a fun journey and insight to you know the last couple years here at nns many years more to come and um thanks for sharing some stories and great analogies like always so glad to be here okay all right happy birthday let's go have some cake all right (laughs) thanks for listening today to with kylie nichols i hope that today you felt empowered to take one more step towards living the best version of you tune in next week for another episode and in the meantime you can find us elsewhere on the internet you can find me on Instagram at Kylie Nichols and at Nickel and Suede. You can also find us at nickelandsuede.com. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.